guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Leatherman R because I struggled to get it open and evaluate it from a survival standpoint. And I think this is important because of being that this is the new uh, Leatherman, like one of the new primary Leatherman tools out there, or at least something that Leatherman is trying to push as kind of their next generation for survival multi-tools. So it would be important to put it up against the Leatherman Surge, the Valley of Leatherman Surge, and see is it really a, a worthy addition? Is it worth moving on to? And really, is it a viable survival multi-tool? So let's jump right into that. And first off, we're gonna go over the prompt. And first off, we're gonna go over the pros of this tool. Like what are the good sides to this multi-tool from a survival standpoint? So first off, I think the biggest like pro to this, and I think this is just broadly speaking, um, in just happens to be also survival related, is that it does have a really nice magnet cut blade. Now, unfortunately, as I've said in other videos, um, the blade on the arc is unfortunately, especially for being what I would consider a full-sized multi-tool, it is one of these smaller, and you guys can see here, hopefully I can get a good straight up comparison apples to apples, but you guys can see there that it is a good bit shorter than a full-sized blade on the Leatherman Surge. So the one kind of pro is that you do get better edge retention, but the one downside is you're sacrificing a usable edge for the design or the way that they designed the Leatherman Arcs tool. Um, now, other advantages for survival that we do see that make returns ultimately is that we see, of course, a pretty usable and pretty decent saw on here, and we see this on pretty much every other Leatherman multi-tool, at least their full-sized line. So you do get a good saw, and I'm not complaining about that. You also do get a file, and the file, while the cross-cut kind of side isn't that useful for survival, you do get a diamond side, as you guys can see here. And of course, the diamond side of a file is good for things like sharpening or infield sharpening sharpening of other tools. So say you're running a folding knife or a fixed blade, especially something like it, say, you know, this um, Demco free range, just have this on, you know, the table, but you know, say you're running this, if you use this blade and it doles out, you can use the diamond file on the Leatherman Arc to restore its edge. Now these aren't necessarily proprietary to the arc. Once again, the charge has a pretty similar setup. You have a diamond-sided file on this guy. You have a saw. You have, <clears throat> you do have a few other goodies. Now, unfortunately, one of the downsides and I think from at least a specifically survival speaking standpoint, the one thing that you do see different between the new Leatherman Arc and something like the Charge or the Wave or even the Surge itself is typically with the, um, with the Surge and with the Wave Charge and all those, you have a fully serrated blade. Now, fully serrated blades aren't the end all to beat all, especially for survival applications, but if you are cutting through if you are cutting through a lot of cordage and a lot of other things like that, it can be handy to have a fully serrated blade. So unfortunately, one of the kind of downsides, at least in my opinion, is that they took away the um, they took away the, the fully serrated blade from the arc. It is no longer in here at all. And once again, they give you as a replacement to that a um, scissor, a pair of scissors. Now for me, in an EDC role, I do think that the scissors are probably a more end useful um, product than a fully serrated blade. Once again, in an EDC role, cutting with scissors is pretty applicable to, you know, unboxing things and doing stuff like that. However, in a survival role, I would actually prefer the fully serrated blade, especially when you consider things like the charge and the wave. You have that fully serrated blade on the outside, and what they've chose to do is go ahead and put the scissors on the inside. So a little bit more of a pain to access those scissors or the charge, but at least you still have the scissors and the fully serrated blade. Whereas on this, you just get the scissors. They have once again fully taken away the serrated blade from this setup. So a little bit of an unfortunate one in that regard. Now another thing that I think you could see as a pro for the arc in survival is that they have in I think most you know like 
leather mint tools, whether you should or not, this area ends up being a strike face, so you can use it to strike things. If you need to hammer in a nail really quick in a pinch, it's obviously not going to replace a hammer, but it gives you a solid steel strike face that you're probably not supposed to use on these more older school designs, including Leatherman Surge, but we do it anyways. However, on the Leatherman Arc, they do actually give you a specific strike face. So if you need to hammer things in, say you want to like drive in a tent peg or a tent post, um, or you want to do something like that, you do have an actual proper strike face that is like flat and designed specifically for striking. So once again, this isn't something that like, you're not gonna replace a full on hammer with this, but it's something that we do a lot anyways with our multi-tools, so it is kind of nice to see that it's being done. Now as far as it goes, um, that's basically it, I would say, as far as survival applicable tools. You do have other tools to this, of course. You do have a can opener, you have a bottle opener. Of course you have, you know, your bit kit or interchangeable, I should say, um, screwdrivers and you do have like a handful of flathead screwdrivers. You do also have an awl, so that can be useful for survival, I suppose. So the awl could be useful. But as far as it goes, the tool set for the ARC, I would say is definitely more EDC setup. So can you use this for survival? I think obviously, like most things, you can. There are a number of useful pieces here. Once again, primarily for me, what I'm looking at with this from a survival standpoint is I like the fact that it has full um, sized like plier head to this guy ultimately. So the plier head is useful for doing a number of tasks. And then of course, once again, speaking about survival specifically, we are looking at still having a, you know, reasonably useful saw and a reasonably useful main blade. Now for me, would this be my top choice for survival and is it gonna replace something like the surge? I would say absolutely not. And here's a few reasons why. First off, I'm very sad to see that um, Leatherman really does not, like they have this T-shank adapter on the surge and the surge alone. And for those who don't know what the T-shank adapter is, it's this little guy here and you can open this kind of locking collar and this locking collar exposes to give you access to T-shanks and with those T-shanks you can put a wide variety of either modifications into the surge or you can put other um, reciprocating saw blade um, saw blades on here so you can even increase the length of your saw not necessarily closed but if you open this guy up you can put a long reciprocating saw blade on this t-shank adapter and run it as an actual tool so I really think that it's a shame that they don't use this t-shank adapter that they make for the surge more frequently and as a slight also kind of downside the surge is very unique because you they also send you the file the diamond sided file with the um, saw so you can have the saw and the file together and replace them or put them in here as you need what this does is two things one i think it's very valuable that it gives you the ability to take the diamond sided file off and so when you are able to remove the diamond sided file you can sharpen your main blade on your actual multi-tool and then on top of this it also frees this outer set of tools so that you do actually still get a full-sized um, scissor on the outside of your blade <clears throat> or multi-tool I should say and of course you still have that fully serrated blade so I think ultimately the Surge's outside core tools are still going to be vastly superior for wilderness survival over anything else Next to that, of course, you don't really have anything too inspiring in here. You have an awl, you have a couple sizes of flathead screwdrivers. Now, on my original or OG Surge, I converted the larger flathead screwdriver to be a chisel. So I think that increases the usability of the Surge very easily, um, giving you that chisel over a flathead screwdriver, especially when you already have the ability to swap. You know, you have your like interchangeable bits here. So I think it's a no brainer to do uh, personally. Now I will say one thing that I do think is handy, especially from an EDC standpoint, but even a survival standpoint, is I like on the ARC how they included both a can opener and a bottle opener. That is something that I do wonder why it took Leatherman so long to do. Anyways, once again, with your surge, you have very thick, very robust 
um, plier heads here and these guys are not going to break easily at all. So huge win here on the Surge. The Surge for me is still going to be the reigning champ for outdoor and wilderness survival applications. And unfortunately, when it comes down to it, my kind of current standing, especially with uh, especially with the um, tools that I already have, if I had to rank them, I would say Surge is going to be number one for me for outdoor wilderness applications. Second place is going to be the Super Tool 300. Don't have it here with me, but I do have a Super Tool 300 and it's just uh, like in my truck. So I'm not gonna go out there and grab it, but the Super Tool 300 would be number two. Number three for me would be the Charge because the Charge has all of the core tools and similarities of the Leatherman Surge in the Super Tool 300. It's just a little bit smaller and a lot more man portable. And then if I had to choose going down from there, I would choose the Leatherman Arc and then the Leatherman Skeletool. For me, those are the Leathermans that I have. I think I also have the PST and the original Super Tool as well, but I'm not really gonna talk about them in this uh, particular video just because uh, the sake of conversation. But anyways, of the more modern tools, the Arc is going to be fairly low. It's gonna be in number four, or the number four spot for me, just because once again, the older tools have a lot more applicable features to wilderness survival, especially featuring that fully serrated blade that the Leatherman Arc simply gets rid of. Now, like I said, from an EDC standpoint, I don't really have anything wrong with getting rid of the fully serrated blade because in EDC, it's not as practical, but in survival, having an extra blade can be indispensable. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.